everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today, we're gonna to be chatting about my most anticipated releases for the second half of 2021. I don't wanna talk about how we're already like halfway through the year. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, all you can do is laugh. I have toned it down a bit. I'll link if you want my list for the first half of the year. There was like 60 to 70 in that one. Who did I think I was? I've only read 45 books this year so far. So for the second half of the year, I have considerably less books that I'm super excited about. I have 29, which I still feels like a lot, but <laughs> I feel like it's more manageable than what I had in the first half of the year. I've been a bit more strict, I've been a bit more picky about what I want to put on this list, and these are the ones I am most, 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 most excited for. All of the dates I'm going to be giving are UK dates. Most probably, most of these books will release the same day all around the world, but I know the UK has some different dates to the US, for example. So if you're like, Sis, that book already came out. I'm like, <laughs> so the first one comes out on July 6th and it is Rise to the Sun by Leah Johnson. I am so excited for this one. I really loved You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson, which came out, I think, last year. So this is her second novel, I believe. This one, I think, is another sapphic relationship, which we love to see. I love sapphic YA. You'll see, like, a few on this list, I think. Yeah, there's quite a few sapphic YA on this list coming out in the second half of the year. Thank you. Uh <laughs> You're so creative. Where do you get your inspiration? Um, God and the gays. And all I know about this one is I believe these two girls go to this festival and it's about them falling in love at this festival. I think they meet at this festival and work together to like have the festival experience they want and they fall in love in the process of it. So, so excited for this. I really loved You Should See Me in a Crown and that was the debut. That was the debut. So I'm really excited to see what is to come next. Next one comes out on July 8th and it is Other People's Clothes by Kala Henkel. Now I was very canny sent an arc of this so I have spoken about this already and quite a few of you were really excited about it. This is a thriller about these two girls who live with this writer <laughs> and they think that the writer is using them as inspiration for her thriller novels and it's set like in the 2000s at the height you know the 2000s pop culture with like Britney Spears free Britney by the way if anyone wonder <laughs> I'm sure that's everyone's opinion. Anyway. So I'm so excited to read a thriller set in that time. That time is so nostalgic to me. It was when I was growing up. I just have such a cool idea for a thriller. I'm like, this is what we need. This is what we need. Giving us what we need. We need this. This is essential. This is a crisis. Next is one of the books I am most excited for, and that is The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas. So this is a YA horror, which I really like YA horror. I feel like YA horror is a good level of scary for me. I am a bit of a baby. <laughs> so I just find I do gravitate more towards YA horror. Um, this is about a boy who can see ghosts. Typically ghosts are just harmless, like reliving their deaths over and over again. So it's more just like an inconvenience to him. But then he meets a ghost who killed uh, like six people or something. So it was like a serial killer and then killed themselves. And the ghost has like plans for him and wants to take control of him basically. So yeah, I love the cover for this. It's partly why I'm so excited for it. Bling, bling, bling. Bitches is mad. <laughs> Ooh, next, uh, coming out on the 22nd of July is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. This is one that everyone is really excited for. Um, I, if you ask me what it's about, Could I tell you? I just kind of saw the cover and the hype and I was like, it's going on the list. It's going on the list. Oh, it's pitched as Mulan meets Song of Achilles. Yes, yes please. please. It is a reimagining of the rise of the founding emperor of the Ming Dynasty for an amazing new voice in literary fantasy. That is exciting. Set in 1345 China. This has had like rave reviews from people who have read it already. So it's similar to Ma Mulan in the sense that the protagonist, in order to try and save her family, I think portrays like a male monk or something. But I am so excited. It's gonna be so good. It's gonna be so good. Oh, another super anticipated July release, also coming out on the 22nd, 
is Love and Other Natural Disasters by Misa Seguria. I told you we have a lot of sapphic YA in this video. I really loved This Time Will Be Different by Misa Seguria, which I read last year. Did I read it this year? No. Mm, it was at the border, whichever one it was, it was at the border. So <laughs> the start of this year, I think it was the end of last year, but... I don't remember, I don't remember, love. I don't remember at all. I really don't, because I know for a long time ago. Oh. All I know about this is that it has a fake dating trope between these two girls. On the back it says, Nozomi has it all planned out. A summer in San Francisco, the perfect internship fake dating the girl of her dreams. Lucky for her, when it comes to love, there's no such thing as a perfect plan. So excited. I am really excited to read more of Misa Seguria. I feel like her stuff is just going to be really quick, um, digestible stuff to read. Like, I love reading a contemporary like this when I'm in a bit of a reading slump. And then my last July release is on the 27th of July, and it's Not a Happy Family by Shari Lapina. I've only read one Shari Lapina. I've read An Unwanted Guest, but I really want to read like all of her other books. All of her other books. I have The Couple Next Door, which I need to read, but this one I believe is about a parents who are killed and they leave behind three children to inherit this like rich estate. The synopsis strongly intimates that one of the kids killed the parents and you're trying to figure out who it was. So your suspect was narrowed down, but I love thrillers that look into like family dynamics, like really bad family dynamics. <laughs> yeah, I just want to read more Shari Lapina. I really liked and I want to guess, like it was a simple fly through mystery thriller and we all know that's what I love. Okay, August. I cannot remember what this book is about. Let's look it up. <laughs> right, so good for me, this synopsis is very short. <laughs> so this is The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. This comes out on the 3rd of August. I've got so many books coming out on the 3rd of August. We'll get through them all. Stephanie Perkins is the author of Anna and the French Kiss, an icon, a living legend here on BookTube. And the synopsis is very simple. It says, a traditional backwards horror story set first page to last in the woods of the huh, Pisca? Don't talk stupid. National forest in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Two girls go backpacking in the woods. Things go very wrong. And then their paths collide with a serial killer. That's all I need to sell me. I have always been interested in Stephanie Perkins' other horror, There's Someone Inside Your House, but I feel like I got bad reviews, didn't it? Am I making that up? And Is this slander? It's got like a 3.45 average rating. I don't think it got the best reviews, but I was intrigued by it. So maybe if I like this one, I will go back and read that one. I've never been interested in Anna and a French Kiss though. I don't think in this day you will catch me reading that. <laughs> it's not for main part. Okay, next August third release is The Dead in the Dark by Courtney Gold. I remember the cover for this one and I know it's about these two girls. We will find out the rest together. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so it's this town where teenagers are going missing and one of our protagonist's parents are like these ghost hunters. So they've come to the town and she has moved to the town and they are investigating it on their TV show. And then the other girl, her boyfriend was the first one to go missing. And I think they basically team up to figure out what or who is haunting the town. And I'm really excited. I'm really excited. It's had really good reviews so far. I love the cover. Next August 3rd release is, oh, How We Fall Apart by Katie Zhao. So this is another thriller. Look at this, look at this. We're just having the best time. <laughs> so this is like a dark academia book, which like, as soon as I say that word, sirens going off, people are going to grab their Goodreads list. They're like, <sighs> dark academia sets all the girls alight. Students at an elite prep school are forced to confront their secrets when their ex-best friend turns up dead. I think it's very similar to a lot of YA thrillers where you have this group of friends and something happens to one of them and then there's secrets all between each other. They all have secrets where this person knows this person's secrets but they don't know this person's secrets and everyone's got secrets. Their secrets. Secrets. <laughs> well, we'll just have to wait and see. You are so inquisitive, my darling. <laughs> and then my last August 3rd release is All's Well by Mona Awad. Now let's chat about this. We need to, ch we need to chat, we need to chat. I did not love Bunny by Mona Awad. I liked it, I think, well, I think, mm, I don't know what I'd give it today if I read it today, because I feel like my rating has changed a little bit since then, but I think I gave it a three star. I didn't love it. I felt like it was a bit 
ambitious but didn't necessarily pull off which I admire it for but I didn't necessarily love it. So I am a bit tentative and a bit nervous going into this book but I know it is about a chronically ill professor putting on this Shakespeare play and then like these people turn up and they like know everything about her life and I'm like we can fix you and it goes from there. I'm gonna give it a go. I'm gonna give it a go. I hope that I love it and me and Mona Awad suddenly click but we shall see. Next is one of my most anticipated releases and it is As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson coming out on August 5th. Now this is the third in the Good Girls Guide to Murder series. If you watch my channel a lot you'll know that that is probably one of my favourite YA mystery murder mystery books. And I don't know if this is going to be the last one. I don't know if it's a trilogy or if we're just going to keep going. I can't say much about the plot of this one because it will spoil the other ones. Basically Pip is a investigator around the town. She solves like murder mysteries or just mysteries in general like in the town where she lives. Um, it's got a lot of like mixed media elements. We have the interviews that she does, if there's like photos or maps and stuff that's all put in the book as well. And she went through something like really big at the end of book two and her character changed a lot especially in like the latter half of book two so I'm really excited to see where her character is gonna go and the path and how the character is gonna react to it and like kind of move on from the circumstances circumstances that we had so oh, I'm so excited for that one it's one of my most anticipated ones next is Velvet Was the Night by Silvia Moreno Garcia so this is by the author of Mexican Gothic which I still haven't read but is one of like I think I'm gonna give it five stars I'm so excited to read Mexican Gothic I need to just hurry up and read basically so this is set in 1970s Mexico City so it's like a historical fiction mystery which that is my favorite combination I love historical fiction and mystery well, guess what, people? I get excited about small things. I love it. I love it so much. And it doesn't matter what historical setting we're in, I just love historical fiction plus a good mystery. I think in this one, basically, someone is missing and these two people are both trying to find this person who's missing. That's all I really know. But I've heard, like, it's, like, dark and, like, smoky and, like, ooh, like, noir. You know? That's, that's the vibe. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I'm so embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, they love you. Next, oh, another one I'm super excited for on our last August release is My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. This comes out on August 31st. Stephen Graham Jones is another author that I'm really excited to read from. I do have The Only Good Indians and it is one, oh, I just wanna get to all my books soon, but you know, it's one that I do wanna get to soon. So I've heard that this book is like a homage to slasher films, which listen, I can't sit here and say, oh my God, I love slasher films. I don't feel like I've ever watched them. Again, bit of a baby. Horror, I've only really watched The Shining. I, lo I loved it. Apart from I did watch The Exorcist when I was like three days old, but can't remember it. <laughs> I don't really know the plot of this too much. I think some dark shit starts happening in this small town and that's basically what I know. But again, super excited to read it. It's one of my most anticipated releases just because I want to give horror a go, like I've said a lot in this video, and Stephen Graham Jones a go. But I feel like I'm going to read The Only Good Indians first. Next is Never Saw Me Coming by Via Kurian, coming out on the 7th of September. I don't know too much about this one. It's one I added to my list only last night. It's about this girl. Oh, I love the plot of this. This is gonna be so much fun. So it's about this girl who seems very normal, but she is also plotting to kill a childhood friend who wronged her. And because of this, she is in like this college clinical psycho psychology, psych psychology study <laughs> for students like herself who lack empathy and can't comprehend emotion like fear or guilt and one of the other one of the other students is found murdered and so it ends up being like this like cat and mouse game and I think we're like running from evil person and it sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds like a really fun thriller. Oh, next, super excited for this, is So Many Beginnings by Bethany C. Morrow. This is a Little Women retelling. <laughs> women. So I loved this woman film. I still haven't read the book. I own it. I bought it. I, as soon as I left the cinema from watching Little Women for the first time, I went and I bought the book. And yeah, this is just like about these four black sisters growing up in the Civil War and then trying to find their path. And it's a retelling. I didn't love the book I have read from by Bethany C. Morrow. It was... 
a song below water is that what it's called i think that's what it's called i didn't love it it wasn't completely for me but i feel like this is a different vibe and out of all the authors that I have read from before that I've been like, I want to give them another go, Bethany C. Morrow is top of the list. And I couldn't tell you why, but I'm most intrigued by her concepts and by what she's bringing out. Oh, next. <gasps> I named this as my most anticipated release for the second half of the year. It is White Smoke by <laughs> Tiffany D. Jackson, ladies and gentlemen. It is Haunting of Hill House meets Get Out. So it's another like YA horror. She's described as running from ghosts. So she's running from a secret past. She has to move into this new house with a newly blended family. I think she's just got like a new stepdad and stepsister. And then the synopsis says something like, oh yeah, but running from ghosts is just a metaphor, right? Because shit starts going down in the house. Things start vanishing, lights turning off, shadows, voices, all of that. So basically, is the house haunted? Is, it, is the house haunted haunted or are we haunted by our memories? I can get real dark, well, we all know. And actually, I don't think everyone knows the extent of my darkness. Like, I can get dark. So excited for this. Oh my god. I love the cover. I love everything about it. I am so excited. Coming out on the 21st of September is Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. A lot of you will know that The House in the Cerulean Sea is probably one of my favorite books I've read so far this year. I absolutely loved it and I was so surprised. Well, I wasn't. I'm chatting shit. Sorry. Hold up. Pause. Rewind. What did she say? Just talking shit! So this is about a man who is collected by the Grim Reaper and he goes to like the place where souls are supposed to pass on but he decides he's not ready and he starts to kind of learn about his life and what he didn't appreciate in it and then he's told he has one week before he has to pass on and so he goes about living a lifetime in seven days and I'm just so excited! I'm so excited to read more from TJ Klune in that writing style. It's gonna be so good. Okay, oh. October. First we have Fireborn by Ashton Flower. This is another one I've been super lucky to get an arc of. I think the vibes of this are like brave. You know, like the Disney film. I think that's kind of the vibes we're going for here. 12, our main character, has pledged like her allegiance to these clans and a girl is stolen and she goes on a mission, I think, to find her. It is middle grade and I'm really excited to read it. I feel like this is gonna be a massive middle grade this year. If you like middle grade, I feel like this is gonna be one of the biggest releases this year. Next is another one of my most anticipated releases and it is The Spirit Engineer by AJ West. It is this historical fiction. So it is set in 1914 in Belfast, I believe. And it's about how after the Titanic, sinks two years later high society has become obsessed with like spiritualism and like trying to summon spirits trying to summon dead relatives to try and speak to them and i think we're following like either a sign i think we're following a scientist and he starts to believe that maybe there is something into this like spirit summoning business i'm super excited for this it is a debut next on october 19th is the death of jane lawrence by caitlin stalin this is another one of my favorite covers i really love this one so this is by the author of the luminous dead so this is another author where i own one of the other books and i'm so excited to read it but i haven't read it yet this one is about this woman who realizes like it's i think it's historical fiction again and she realizes that she has to marry in order to kind of live the life of freedom that she wants she marries this guy that she doesn't really know and then at night he is like crazed has no idea who she is the house is manic and then in the morning he has no memory of that happening and so she starts to think like is there something strange going on in this house or is this guy just like it's getting weird Next is The Haunting Season, which is an anthology. This is basically like ghostly stories, I think, like ghostly short stories by a lot of really famous kind of like literary, fiction-y kind of authors. I think it's gonna be really, really fun. Like just some nice haunting stories. And then next is another anthology. It is The Very Medi- It is The Very Merry Murder Club. So this is an anthology of mostly middle grade authors, I believe, doing like seasonal, murder mysteries i'm really excited i know that benjamin dean the author of you me you good god get a grip girl <laughs> me my dad and the end of the rainbow i know that he's written um a short story in it that's how i found out about it i really want to read murder most unladylike i think that's by robin stevens and i believe she is like the editor of the anthology so i'm just so excited for this i love anthologies i love 
murder mysteries <laughs> and I love middle grade. I love all of those together. So I'm so excited for this one. Then we have a few November releases. Now I am hoping this is still coming out in November. I haven't heard anything otherwise, but I also haven't heard much about it. I believe the author is still finishing it. If I was like 100% certain that it was coming out, this would have been what I said was my most anticipated 2021 second half release in my mid-year freak out tag, but I wasn't, so I didn't want to say it and then it not actually be coming out. It is Girls of Fate and Fury by Natasha Le Yang. This is the third and final book in the Girls of Paper and Fire series. It is one of my favourite fantasy series ever. It is sapphic. It is beautiful. It is this amazing world that has been built. It's one of the best world buildings I've ever read in a fantasy series and I'm just so excited. I'm so excited to see where this series ends up, where the characters end up. I just can't wait. I absolutely just can't wait. I know that Natasha Yang has had quite a few like health issues in the past couple months so that is the main reason why I don't know whether it's coming out. I don't mind waiting a bit longer. I can wait a bit longer if I need to but I'm hoping it will come out still in November. I'm hoping. I haven't heard different, but I also haven't heard people like, oh, it's coming out. So we shall see. Then coming out on November 2nd as well is You Reach Sam by Justin Thao. So this is about a young couple who are in love, but then the boyfriend, Sam, passes away. In her grieving process, the girl keeps ringing his cell phone and he picks up. So this is a very much a book about grief, about loss, about like not being able to say goodbye to the person that you love. Um, I'm really excited for it. I hope that I'm gonna love it. It sounds really touching, really heartbreaking. I love heartbreaking contemporaries. Like they're, they're my go-to for contemporaries. Me to myself. To say you suffer would be lovely, darling. Then on November 9th, we have Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood. This is another like YA fantasy. It is a retelling of Jane Eyre. It's about this girl who's like an exorcist and she's hired by this guy, but he's not entirely trustworthy. He's a bit, he's a bit sus. And I think this is one of the most anticipated releases for a lot of people towards the end of the year. Um, I'm so excited. It sounds really, really interesting. And then my last release my last anticipated release is my only December one, and it is A History of Wild Places by Shea Earnshaw. So this is like a cult book, which we know I love books about cults. I love books about cults. Don't ask me why, but I love them. I believe this is about a guy who is known for being talented at finding missing people. He's hired on this case, and then he goes missing himself. It's all tied into this community called Pastoral, who live very sheltered lives, and it's about people, I think, years later investigating his disappearance in the context of this cult basically. Oh my god, the end, the last line of the synopsis, it says hauntingly beautiful, hypnotic and bewitching. A history of wild places is a story about fairy tales, our fear of the dark and losing yourself within the wilderness of your mind. You don't even need me to say a word. You don't even need me to say a word. I'm obsessed. I'm so excited for that. Oh my god, I feel like it's gonna be so good. Oh, that is all of my second half of the year 2020 releases that I am so excited for. So many good books. I can't wait to read all of these. Let me know which ones you are most excited for down below. If it's any of these or if you've got some other ones, I'll be trying not to take recommendations at this time because I need to just read the ones I'm most excited for. If you've gotten to the end of this video, comment a calendar emoji. And yeah, I hope you're all having a good time and I will see you very soon in another video. Bye.